Hi, welcome to part two of Doing a Still Life. So if you haven't watched part one, then make sure that you watch part one first because otherwise you're going to be a bit lost. So, um, so far I've done all my line drawing, I've done a little bit of measuring, not too much, and I've established all my lights and I started establishing some medium tones as well. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cough at the moment. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, come back to my bottle. So as you see, I am working everywhere simultaneously, apart from my background that I'm doing afterwards. Yeah. I normally do backgrounds first, but in this case, I'm going to do it afterwards. I'm going to be working from the center outwards. And that's because I'm working with all pastels. And if I do my background first, I'm, when I come to a center, I'm going to smudge it all. Yeah, so there's always a reason. So I've got my lights already established. And what I'm going to be doing now is that I'm going to bring in the darkness. Now, don't be afraid when you bring in the darks. You need them there in order to get your contrast and also to have depth and make things look more realistic so if you go too gently with your darks it won't look quite right yeah so just establishing a few here So with all pastel you can apply more or less pressure and that can help define the tone. So if you don't want it too dark, you can just apply a bit less pressure. Yeah. So I've got that there. Okay, I'm gonna leave them for now and I'm going to start coming with a grey and bringing in some mid <coughs> and where you've got the water if you are working on this material you kind of want to go quite hard on the water so that that blending gives illusion of water, yeah? It's a reflection of my window in the bottom. I'm just going to go over a little bit with the greys on top of the blacks to make the darks blend a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to come back with a white. Blend in the greys. Give the rest of my bottle a little bit of a base time. Okay. So I'm gonna leave the water bottle here for now. I might come back to it. I don't know, depending on how much time we've got. I'm pretty happy to just leave it there as a basic. Yeah. So I'm gonna come back to the apple and I've done my lights and I've done my mitts. And now I'm going to go into my darks, okay? So I'm going to grab this deep dark red. I might actually grab a little bit of brown before just to make the, just for the darkest. And then I put the red on top and make them blend. So 
I'm just looking at all the darkest bits. A tiny bit of black in there for the holies. Yeah. working again directional mark making I'm going inwards from that little bit there A lighter red, which is a cadmium. Just making marks to make it look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna come back to my lovely lime green and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of speckles and that contrast between the green and the red works a treat. But as you can see, see I cannot make that dark much lighter. And now I'm going to bring my black again and I'm going to make the stick of the apple. Bring a little bit of a brown <coughs> on top of that duck and give it a tiny light with academium yellow. Yeah, while I've got this one in my hand, okay, I can do that. So, got that. I'm gonna go back to my stick. Get a bit darker in some parts. <clears throat> I'm gonna make it lighter in others. I'm just gonna cover up those reds a little bit with a brown. And I'm gonna bring a bit of light of lime green. Mm, what have I got? Now I'm going to go with the shapes. I'm not going to go into great detail guys because I've got to keep this in 15 minutes which means I cannot do as much detail as it would be nice to. But you guys are at home and you've got all the time in the world so you're going to spend loads of time in making this amazing and then hopefully you will show me the results. Once I see you again. I'm gonna make a few little details there. And then we're gonna go back to this flower. I'm gonna bring in again some browns to my darkest bits. Just to give me a little bit of because my red is not dark enough. And then I'm going to go back to this red and I'm going to go on top of the browns because we don't want it brown, we want it to be red.
I'm gonna grab my white and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of reflections where I went in before. This table shakes. I've got it in kind of a very simple way. You guys are gonna go over it. Now, to finish this off, what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna draw the contour of those shadows. And shadows are amazing things for realism in any picture. If you don't have a shadow, it kind of looks like things are floating in the air. Things are floating in the air. It would look more like something that is surrealistic rather than something that is realistic. So I'm going to go right next to my objects with a little bit of black. And observing where my darkest darks are in these shadows. I absolutely love drawing shadows. I think they're great. So first I've gone with my darkest darks, I'm going to fill in the contours and that you just do by observing the shapes, yeah? blending those blacks because I don't want them to be so so dark. I just don't have a mid-gray in my palette. So I'm using it by blending the gray and that one. And after I've done that I'm gonna go with my grays and I'm just gonna observe on my mantelpiece which bits are darker than which. Now I'm going to grab my white And I'm observing the shadows and the lights on the mantelpiece as I have everywhere else in my drawing because they are as important. got an intense light, just apply more pressure. And you can use it to blend in the darks as they go inwards. Yeah. And I'm just going to 
finish it off by making highlights here and there that need to. Now with your highlights, always try to be minimal. If you make too many highlights, it will look a little bit wrong. So in terms of highlights, I always tell my students, less is more. Yeah, the less you do, the better it looks. So I'm going to leave this here for today and I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson and remember you can do it with anything that you've got at home. I think more than anything is at the beginning you have to make sure that you measure and you try to understand the relationships between the sizes of how one element relates to the other. So how big is the apple in comparison to the bottle and so on. Start off with something simple. Make it more complicated once you um, done it once or twice and you know how to do it. So I really enjoyed teaching this lesson and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Please take good care of yourselves and it looks like we haven't got too long until we can see each other face to face. Take good care. Bye bye.